We go. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, this is uh, Henry at Greystone Carving Studio. Monday <laughs> afternoon. What's the date? Seventeenth of 17th? November. Yeah. Fifteenth yesterday. Sixteenth. Right. Uh, yeah. Welcome. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> what are we going to do? Um, I've been um, uh, working this morning with um, my ear defenders on. Um, listening to um, um, an amazing book called The Body Keeps the Score about, tra about trauma. Listening to trauma and carving. Listening to um, uh, trauma and carving. And so what I've done this morning and what I want to show you is continuing off the acanthus leaf and also I've been doing a little bit of masonry on a finial which you can probably see in the background and I'll be showing you what <coughs> what I've been doing step by step and Masonry is very much step by step, and this kind of carving is very much step by step. And um, so, um, last time, not last Monday, the Monday before, because last Monday we took my son to have a COVID test. Um, and if you've ever tried to get one of those um, dingatures up, your know, six year old's hooter you will know that it's not the most pleasant operation uh, he didn't like it very much and um and in all that i just completely forgot we got we got home and i completely forgot i'm afraid so this week we're going to do what we we're going to do last week which is show you the next stage of this acanthus leaf so this is a kind of very flat version so normally normally you would have something similar to this on um, the side of a, um, a Corinthian capital, or you can have a canvas leaf carved into a kind of corbel. I did. I, I was starting the beginning, drawing the beginnings of a corbel. I thought, how, how you, cause, um, and um, and then I gave up because I couldn't find any reference material in the short time between. I decided to um, draw it and and and, and this. So. Um, I suppose what I'm saying is that normally there's a lot more movement in the base of it. There's a lot more movement there. So then, you know, you've got this, it might even be the other way up, you've got this movement or the, uh, the rounded um, barrel of um, uh, a Corinthian cap. Uh, this, this drawing offends me, I'm going to rub it out. Um, uh, a, 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 or, or the barrel of a, a, a Corinthian capital, so they're kind of like some of the canvas leaves are quite a, a, a round in shape like that. And what we had last week was the last week before last was I was beginning to take the check out of here, um, uh, which will then give you this carving block for the um, for the, uh, the the top of the leaf as it rolls over the top or gives the illusion of rolling over um, and um, uh, and that's the main function of that and then what I did this morning is that I carved this kind of S shape um, on the side of the central kind of frond um, so it, it, it kind of shows you the steps of, of, of it here so you've got your check out and then I've, I've carved this shape um, and what I'll do now before we start is I'll carve one side of um, one side of this this roll and then I'll start carving the um, the uh, the external edges of these petals and then that'll probably be enough so um, here we go So I'm just going to do one side. And I mean, although I, I, I've kind of drawn I've drawn the leaves on and I'll have to draw them on again. And um, the
um, yeah, I'm just. And it's funny having a little bit of stone like this because you wouldn't normally, this would be a part of a bigger job. So I wouldn't be chasing it around the banker. Um, but actually, that's quite a, that's a good point. So for those of you who will be kind of like doing stone carving and starting out, you might start off with a little bit of stone. And one of the things you can do, oh, before I do that, did I show them this? So this is the template I've got, I've made. And um, what, what, what I've done is uh, I've, I've cut, as you see, I've cut around the outside of it. And that means that um, I can I can apply what you know once once I've um, um, carved something I can apply apply this again and again and again I don't have to kind of redraw it I can just draw around it and I've got so there there we have our, our kind of datum we have our curves already done it just makes it easy to um, for either reference or to reapply it. So it's very useful to have a template like that. And I'll put that there and go back to what I was going to say, which was um, if you have a small bit of material and you don't want to be chasing it around the banker like I was just then, what you can do Put a rock next to it, or a breeze block, or whatever you want to do. Oh. Run that. Put a, um, a block next to it, which adds to it. The other thing that I have, which I use for jobs, or the students use for jobs that are kind of small and don't have a flat edge to it or a flat surface um, or a back or, or you have to do uh, I use um, sandbags so these are made these are made of um, this, is, this, is, this is kind of useful information because people don't tell you how do you hell um, in in masonry um, they use sand boxes so you have a box but here I use a sand bag so these are jeans legs that have been sawn off and then Tam sewed the ends up and um, and then I've used a um, cable tie on the end once I've filled up with sand, and they do kind of so they and they and they're, I don't know, brilliant. They make a hell of a difference, and it's a, it's much easier to to, to work with a piece of material. Um, I know people who carve wood um, screw um, screw their jobs to a, a bigger bit of wood. And I also, there is also um, the, um, the option of, of sticking um, plaques to bigger bits of stone with plaster. That also works. Um, works very well. And that's particularly good for kind of, if you're doing relief carving or, or lettering. somewhere but um, I, I cleared up um, so that the workshop would look reasonably tidy and in the process of cleared away everything useful. Right. I'm gonna take this. This isn't a claw, this is um, uh, a fishtail, a mallet headed tungsten tip fishtail made by John Parsons. And um,
So normally you just push this right across, but I'm, I'm kind of keeping the stages there, just so that you can see. So this is where this template is useful. I mean, I could cut cut this out, so I would just reapply reapply it. But I'm not going to. I'm just going to. Um, I'm just going to copy it, redraw it. And, and actually, because because this is now a curved surface, the um, it's changed. Something like always. In, I always kind of feel like I'm in a bit of a hurry um, when um, I'm doing these videos. I would so. Feel like I'm kind of flapping a bit, but the, and I would. Um, no. So um, this <clears throat> so this is a V cut. So these would be V-cuts, so they would be um, like that. And because these are coming over, these are um, the other way, so they're a kind of apex. So this will be the high spot. This will be the high spot, although obviously this, this is higher than this spot. So you carve this leaf first, with this central vein as being the high spot, down there, you cut into there, so this is goes goes down there, and you've got that kind of shadow in there, and then you do the same here. But before that, I mean, and also the, this this would this tips down a bit, that goes down, so this is, this drops down a bit, so you've got the the curve going over like that, and then just tipping in a little bit. Although, you know, there are a huge amount of variations and differences in the canthus leaves. And, um, you know, if it felt, you know, that, that it occurs to me that because there's very little depth here, although I might, this central front, can you see that? One? That central front there, this central vein here, I might drop down a little more. So if you roll this over, you're, you're, the, the, that depth, that height isn't very much. So you c could to, to um, give the illusion of more kind of movement and shadow, make this into a little S shape. So it would come over like that, so it would go in and then back out again. So the tip of this leaf would would come out. So the tip of this leaf would come out. So the tip of this leaf would come out. But I, 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 that's just a thought that crosses my mind now. Um, and kind of traditionally, you'd have a, a very distinct and particular style that you would follow slavishly. So now, um, at this point, what I do is, if you can see that I've drawn a line along here to drop down, drop down again, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out these, and then I'll, I'll start that, I'll do a little bit of that, and then we'll pack it in, and um, I'll show you the other thing. Um, Any queries or questions? Anybody got? Rue said, I'm fond of that idea. Uh -huh. Oh, hello, hello, guys. <laughs> so 
So, the mistake a lot of people make when working with stone is that the they steam into this internal curve, this internal V-cut, steam in there and blow out that. So when you've got an internal corner, you always start from the from the corner and work outwards. And when you've got a kind of feather edge or a point, you always work inwards. Um, Geneva said zero COVID in Western Australia for the last five months. Wow. No COVID at all? Mm, in Western Australia, apparently, for the last five months. You're doing good. That's amazing. Well, we, we In the West Country, we've had relatively little, little COVID. Um, it's relatively little. But um, I've got a friend of mine who lives in Bury near Manchester who who says that um, it's really dreadful there it's got an incredibly high R rate and um, the local um, healthcare professionals are, are they have a dog in the hospitals that they have to help patients um, you know so a kind of comfort dog or I don't know that's not the right thing to say what kind of what do you say a kind of a, a therapeutic dog <laughs> dog and uh, <laughs> sorry and the um, and the um, <laughs> and the nurses and the doctors they're having to you you know they're, they're having because they're in bits you know absolutely oh god I'm going to count on crying <laughs> oh god yeah anyway when my friend was talking about it, therapy I was, animal. Yeah. Therapy animal. Yeah, that's it. Well, the 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 um the nurses and the doctors are having to kind of are kind of giving the dog a little cuddle and then it absolutely in bits because they're just dealing with dying people all the time, and uh, we just don't see that. And down here, and as a consequence, everybody's a bit blasé about it. All. Whereas, oh, we said they can smell corona as well. Yeah? Oh, right, OK. I know that there's some dogs that can smell cancer, apparently. <laughs> I don't know where I know that from. Maybe I made it up. But, I mean, you know, no, I'm, I'm pretty sure that there are animals that... Maybe it's... Uh... So one of the things that I mean, I, I, this book I've been re I've been listening to. No, no, I've not got a copy at home, but I haven't read it. I've been listening to the audio book of um, the Body Keeps the Score. One of the things that I'm um, I'm looking at because we're hoping to get some um, veterans to help with a job um, for the Desert Rats Association. Um, is the therapeutic value of um, stone carving. You know, so everybody... I mean, I have my own experience of how stone carving helps with kind of mood regulation and um, that single point, that mindfulness and single point of attention. And... Um, <laughs> Part of me that was looking for kind of evidence of that, and um, you know, if there's any kind of uh, parallels, but the therapies that they're suggesting, uh, the non kind of chemical therapies that they're suggesting, the chemical therapies don't work very much, are fascinating, and it's really interesting the kind of kind of. Re rewiring or, or, or changing the fight and flight and, and fight and flight mechanisms and rewiring the brain so that they, and so that you don't the people don't respond in the same way. So it's it's really fascinating. So here we are. I'm kind of dropping this dropping this down and what I'll do 
as you can see this stage there you go you see this stage that's dropped down and what I'll do is for next time I will get everything to that stage I might take Tam's trying to get me to take some photographs whilst I do it but it's a bit difficult when you're on your own in here get everything to that stage and then we can get to carving the uh, you know the um, this is just the blocking out really we can get to carving the um, the fronds and leaves and the V cuts and you get to that kind of the really enjoyable bit although this is a kind of mindless bit I really I like it I can listen to my book at the same time so there's that is that okay is that all that's just a kind of demo of the um, this blocking out initial checkout rolling that over so you do that cut that out roll that over reapply this to the whole thing um, then um, or, or, or you can do that this this way um, do this kind of um, carve this shape into the into the face of it the, um, the dynamic of the leaf and then start carving it around the outside and then once that's done and that's dropped out you've done the kind of blocking out and you can start doing the the kind of arty bit um, but even that is kind of pretty straightforward it's pretty kind of um, and you then have to be a little bit careful about the levels you know what leaf is above what other leaf to create the shadow um, bearing in mind also you need to n you need to need to realize that everything is so light is normally coming from above yeah so you need to um, realize that you want to create shadow from above which actually means can you see that I would like to move that line out and make this the high point and that the low point so I'll do again there you go so, that's that. so far so good okay right now we this now we this so this is um, a, a job I'm going to finish off to, tomorrow or the, you know, I've, I've got I want to try and get it done by the next end of the week so I'll I, I'll, I'll do it um, and it's a fitting off it's um, to go on the top of a um, uh, a gable, an apex stone on on a, a, a gable end on on some um, a gable end. Oh, what's it called when you put stuff on top of walls? What are they called? Wall. Cap. S no stone on walls. Stop the rain getting into them. Anyway, can't remember. You might come to me. Coping. <laughs> gable end coping. So you you have you have. Um, yeah, coping on a gable end and this is to go on top of the apex stone and that's what it looks like you see I've done some kind of drawings on it just to um, uh, um, so that I can get some reverses made and what I've done here is I found so this is really ABC stuff and this is exactly how Masons did it have done it and always done it um, and it's not carving and you're you're trying to get a very kind of geometric shapes so what I did first of all was I found this point here this point here this point no well no sorry this point this point this point and this point so these and this point was found already so you have these four points you identify you just drop drop the stone down and you have little checks that you make little kind of um, sunken panels that you make there there and there and then I dropped it down because there's a, a nipple on top it looks that like that the nipple on top I dropped it down drop, dropped this down the height and the, and, and the width of the nipple dropped down, down to there so I have two points that I've established obviously that was in the flat stone of the top of the top of the uh, finial so it, it, it again a little panel that's dropped down a little sunken panels dropped down 
So I've established a point there and a point there. And then what I did was I made this reverse, little reverse, and apply, applied the reverse. So basically started off by carving down between those two points until the reverse fitted reasonably well. And then I did there, the same. Yeah, and then I did there, and so I did all the four quadrants, so you have these lines coming down. And then, this is this one, this is this one. Then I got this reverse, and I work between that point and that point that I made. So there, so I made that quadrant. It's very, it's not, it's very boring, but rather interesting. And I want to take it away because the quadrant is absolutely perfect. So how can you see? I've, I've applied, reapplied this. You see this mark here, this mark here, this mark here. Yeah. Those are areas that I want to take down a little bit to make that curve perfect. So once you've made, once you've made, um, done this quad, carved this quadrant, this kind of, what it is, it, it, it's not a draft. It's a draft. Yeah, this draft, rounded draft there. You want to do this draft. Then you can reapply this from there to there and this leaves you with these kind of um, these these areas between these channels all the way around which you then can carve you will carve and um, you, you could do another one if you wanted but I, all I did was I just kind of judged it and carved it and um, gradually worked it and I'm gradually applying it to all all the areas so that I got this nice even shape all the way around. Is it a pineapple or a nut? It's an acorn. <laughs> a big acorn. I'd like to do a pineapple. It's very traditional. Pineapples are really traditional. You have them on gateposts in big stately homes, these pineapples. And they are, they are stylized pineapples. So, so there's that. That's how far I've got. And um, so this is round, this, this part is round, so there's your acorn, yeah, this part is round, and then this and this is square. So what will be interesting is to make the square kind of scoopy bit, um, it, will, um, it will have to meet the rounded bit. And so there's one point that you can guarantee that is accurate. And that's this point here. So I can cut into here and establish that point there. But that point there is only here. Yeah. Actually, what will happen is that it will it will the um, it will go up like that. It will be like that a little bit. But that line makes itself because uh, it's on the corner. You see. That, that, that point is on the corner in there and it will be slightly higher than this point. It, it uh, that might be difficult to visualise, um, but this is where you trust the material, you trust the geometry, you trust the geometry and you, you trust that you've got this plane that scoops up like that and it's, and then, yeah, anyway, trust me. It, it, or I trust, trust the geometry. Don't trust me, trust the geometry, it works. So that's it, Are we, we, it's about 25 minutes. Um, I want to show you, uh, this is something that's knocking around the workshop. I want to show you this. That is a carving by J Jacob Epstein and it's called Jacob and the Angel. I thought it was St. Michael and the Angel, but I'm reading the instructions on the back. Jacob and the Angel, it's in, Angel and it was in the Tate Liverpool. Um, it is in the National Gallery, I think. Um, uh, I'm not. I'm, I, wish I, I saw it in London last time. It was absolutely brilliant. I just wanted to get my hands all over it. It's a huge bit of alabaster, and it's Jacob Epstein has been described as the um, kind of the stonemason's sculptor because he really honoured material. And this bit of alabaster is absolutely extraordinary. It's just so beautiful. Anyway, I, I recommend anybody to go and see it. Um, and uh, if anybody's got any experience of, um, uh, of that, 
uh, of having seen it, I'd be really interested in what you think about it. Um, that's about it, really, isn't it? I haven't wrung my hands too much. <laughs> Tam said, you're a bit weird. You're kind of running, running, you know. Yeah, and it's, it's because I'm a bit freaked out. But, um, yeah, uh, I'm, yeah, I'll put my arms in here. Anyway, thank you very much. Um, have a lovely week. Have a safe week and all that palaver. Um, yeah, look after yourselves. And...